This month, we have a new PinePhone Community Edition, some good things about PineBook Pro and PineTap Production, and some updates on the Quart64 single board computers. Big thanks to Luke Zarzinski, JF, Gammy, Clover, and Pixel Paintbrush for helping with this video. Also, if you want more content about open source hardware and software, check out my channel, Pizza Loving Nerd. This is a video version of the community update, so this will not have as many details as the blog post. However, this video should give you the synopsis, so let's get into it. Let's first start with our housekeeping section. We're launching a new podcast next month called Pine Talk, hosted by the writer for LenMob.net and a YouTuber known as Euatrionian. Our new website is also up. There are still some tweaks for the website that are still needed, but those will be applied in the coming days. Let us know how we did. And finally, we have finished our work on the chat bridge, and IRC is now bridged up again. LCD availability is looking a lot better than the past few months, so we are now confident to announce that both the Pinebook Pro and the PineTab will be back in store shortly after Chinese New Year. However, the price of LCDs is still very high. We always avoid increasing product price, and we will likely not increase the price of either the Pinebook Pro or the PineTab, but... If the choice is between having no Pinebook Pros or Pine Tabs in stock, or having them in stock with a higher price, then we will choose the latter. As for software, we are happy to announce that Open Mandriva LX 4.2 is now available on the Pinebook Pro with KDE Plasma. This uses the URPMI Package Manager to install RPM packages and is available on the project's source forage repo. We also have a near preview image of FreeBSD on the Pinebook Pro. This release also fixes a keyboard issue that plagued the system on the Pinebook Pro. If you want to try this out, we recommend that you read FreeBSD's forum post before downloading the image for extra info, including instructions to enable audio and enabling external network cards. We also have a new build of the Debian based AOSC Linux distro, and this build has options for almost every DE you would want, including GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon, XFCE, among many others. This OS is very snappy, and Lucas was not able to discover any big issues on this OS. We are also happy to report that USB-C Alt-DP has been merged into Manjaro's default OS image for the Pinebook Pro. This means that the docking deck, as well as other USB-C docks, should now output video up to 4K through USB-C. All you have to do to get these changes is update the system. We are also happy to report that OpenGL 3.0 will be enabled on the open source GPU driver that most OSs use on the Pinebook Pro. It will take some time for every distro to get these patches, but you should see these changes in your favorite Linux distro in the foreseeable future. Congratulations to Sundog for being the first person to correctly solve last month's riddle and guess the name of the Quartz 64 single board computer. They will be receiving the first production board once those are ready. For those of you who want to learn more about Pine64 Riddles, something we think we'll do more of in the future with device launches, there is a thread on the forum to discuss them. The Quartz 64 will be the first RK3566 board on the market, and the Model A prototype is already complete and being evaluated internally. We aren't quite ready to show it off as there are some design decisions that may need reworking before it sh gets shipped to devs, but we promise the reveal is coming soon. That said, we might have some information to share, all of which refers specifically to the Model A board. This board will be available in two configurations with 4GB of RAM and 8GB of RAM. You will also be able to fit it with heatsinks designed for the Rock Pro 64 board. The board will feature multiple USB 3.0 and USB-C ports, as well as four PCIe, EDP, and MIPI display output options alongside a standard GPIO header you'd come to expect. Some of you will surely be excited to learn that the Quartz 64 Model A will feature a dedicated e-ink panel interface capable of supporting a capacitive pen, and we will also have a 10-inch e-ink display available in the Pine Store around the same time the Quartz 64 boards launch. This December, the bootloader has gotten a lot of work. This is the software that runs when you first start up your Pine Time, and it helps boot into the appropriate OS or firmware. The current version was mainly written by Yep Yan Lee, and Yep was the one who drew the Pine Time logo when you see the bootloader running. 
Since last September, we fixed a few bugs and added more functionality, such as recovery firmware and a better UI. Since this is the most critical part of the Pine Time software, we did a lot of community testing and got quite a few reports of successful bootloader upgrades. AffiniTime 0.10 has also released this month, and the special part of this release is that it was mostly developed by new contributors and not just the project lead. The two biggest changes were two new games. The two most notable changes were two new games being included with the OS, including a Pong light game and a 2048 light game. There was also a fork of AffiniTime this month called Jock Time, and this firmware has a UI overhaul with nice and colorful icons and new watch faces. WaspOS has also been on a roll with a new theming engine, dynamically enabling and disabling applications to save memory, and a alarm and calculator app. Last month we talked about Amosfish being ported to work on other Linux distros. Well, this month that has now been done with Amosfish 1.8.5, and now we just need people to build and package it for other Linux distros. We also now have a working navigation app for the Pine Time based on Peer Maps and Amosfish. This month we have a new community edition to announce, the Mobian Community Edition. For the time being, this is going to be the last community edition to ship, and as usual with the new community editions, there are two editions you could pick up. A baseline model with 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigs of storage for 150 US dollars, and a $200 model with an extra gigabyte of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and a USB-C conversion stock. You can expect a blog post with pre-order info on January 18th, or three days after this video comes out. Mobian on the Pine phone has matured very well, and all of the core functionality, including calls, 4G LTE, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Deep Sleep, both the cameras, and the GPS, are now functional on Mobian. It also now features an on-device installer, allowing users to set up their login information. However, the build shift is still pre-release software, so please update it as soon as you get your Pine phone. As with all the other community editions sold, we are donating the Mobian project $10 for every Pine phone sold. Thanks to all of the projects who have participated with us to make community editions of the Pine phone. Thanks to these projects, we have been able to contribute a lot to Linux on mobile development. As for software news, the modem on the Pine phone can now run mainline Linux. And yes, you heard me right. The modem can now run Linux. This is still a proof of concept but there is currently an effort to replace the modem firmware with a community-built Linux one, although for legal reasons we cannot ship that by default. Still, the implications of this development are massive, and at the time of writing this video, you can install an operating system on the modem and even run a Minecraft server on the modem. This month also got a port of OpenMandriva LX 4.2 with the URPMI package manager, which allows to install RPMs on the system. It ships with a slightly older version of Plasma Mobile and kernel 5.10. Speaking of Plasma Mobile, we have seen massive improvements to the user interface in the past weeks. The Plasma Mobile team has a dedicated blog post about all of the improvements that they've made, and we highly recommend you to read this blog post, but the Pine phone specifically now has a significant performance boost on all default apps including Angelfish and the Discover Store. We highly suggest that you try out Plasma Mobile, so if you want to give it a go, we recommend the newest Manjaro Plasma image. And finally, we would like to mention the new Manjaro Lomare image. Thanks to Marius Grips card from UbiPorts, the Manjaro image now supports traditional X11 apps, as well as GPS navigation, a GPU accelerated browser, and functional Bluetooth. As for hardware news, we are currently prototyping our keyboard and looking at options to try and include a larger battery into the body of the keyboard. We also now have a time frame for delivery and we expect units to be delivered to us in April. The keyboard itself will be using the Pinephone's pogo pins and replacing the back case with the keyboard. We are also adding a breakout board for the microSD slot so that you don't have to take the entire keyboard off to swap microSD cards. And finally, we have made a decision to merge the QI charging case and the fingerprint reader case so that there aren't two separate back cases. We are aware that some people might only want one or the other, so we are still exploring ways to give people the option to choose between them. Regardless, this will take time to do, so hold tight and look out for more info in the coming months. For Pine Cell news, we have a new version of IronOS available for the Pine Cell. This firmware has a bunch of bug fixes, so we highly recommend you to upgrade over to it.
Instructions for flashing the new firmware is available on the Pine64 wiki page. We also have a new red version of the Pine Cell exclusive for the Chinese market. The only difference though is the red casing, which you can also buy on the Pine Store for $6. We opened a second production run on January 6, although the second run has already sold out. This was a large production run and we were not prepared for it to sell out quite as quickly as it did. As a result, we're in the process of producing an even larger production run of the Pine Cell, which should be available for purchase in early February. Both the portable and desktop Pine Powers are now in the Pine64 store. We made the decision that the desktop Pine Power will also include QI wireless charging. Someone may wish to use that for their Pine phone in the future. Since we didn't talk about the desktop version of the Pine Power that much, desktop Pine Power contains two 65 watt switching power supplies, one of which serves USB-C power delivery, while the other delivers power to the 18 watt QC 3.0 USB-A port, three individual 5 volt USB-A ports, as well as the 10 watt wireless QI charging. In other words, it is capable of delivering power to all of your Pine64 devices and even capable of powering the Pine Cell while charging the Pinebook Pro, Pine Phone, and Pine Tab simultaneously. We also want to address comments inquiring whether we use existing power supply unit designs. Both PSUs are based on reference designs, but we have made significant improvements to the internals so that they are more performant than existing offerings. Despite both designs being generic, the PSUs have had improvements made to their performance and undergone certification. For instance, the generic design experiences a component failure after two hours of sustained full load. We made significant adjustments to the CP. We made significant adjustments to this PCU, and it can now sustain a full load for over 12 hours based on lab testing. Now for our final bit of this community update, we're going to talk about the PineCube. There is a new build of Armbian available for the PineCube with a motion daemon installed. There is also a new community build of MotionEye that can run at around 1 or 2 FPS on the PineCube. However, it is possible that Moonfire and VR could run better on the PineCube because it's designed for running on devices with extremely low resources. Lastly, there's now wiki documentation explaining how to interface with the PineCube using a Arduino Uno. Although, given that the... However, seeing as the PineCone is simply a RISC-V microcontroller board, it is likely that you could also use a PineCone as a serial interface for the PineCube. Anyways, that is all for this month. We hope you have a well rest of your month and keep contributing to the community.